<sighs> All right, I'm back. I finished my second round maybe 45 minutes ago. It was a very long game. And now in one more hour, I start another game. I'm playing Gari Shankar. And I really haven't done much preparation, so this is going to be some quick prep. I'm probably going to stick with the London, but I was just looking at uh, maybe playing Knight C3. So let me switch to here. So I do have his chess.com account. Um, let's type in, was it Grandmaster Gari? Has he ever played against us? Also, I have uh, chess ABC open. Let me go back here. Um, Prepare against black. So d4. I have six. Okay, he's never encountered knight c3. Okay, d5. Bishop f4, knight f6. Okay. I might just stick with normal London, but I, I do want to look into this. Uh, knight c3, d5. Bishop f4. So he plays everything here. So the question is, do I want to get a position that we're both less familiar with? Because um, knight c3, it's still playable. Oops, I'm going to have stockfish running. I mean, I would be more inclined to go for this if I knew what he would play against it. So he's played e6. Yeah, it's just a bad London. The knight's misplaced on c3. OK. So, um, I guess I'll prepare London. I was looking at one of the games that he's played against Andrew Tang. Oh, I forgot to switch windows there. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm not going to play the, the Joe Bava London. I'm just going to play standard London. Um, let me go into chess base. So I have the game here. Uh, he played one of the, the main lines. This trendy line with b6. So let me see if I can find any last minute ideas. Uh, I'll have stockfish running yeah, the whole time. What's going on? What's chess pace doing? Chess pace is bugging. Save this. Control S. Okay, let's reopen this. Oops. All right. I just want something like reasonable to play. Maybe I could play this line with knight f3, like knight gf3, and confuse him. I forgot about that line. It's not a bad option. We get some structure if he uh, if he takes on f4. Okay, I'm going to go back to his chess.com games and see if he has any games in this variation. Let's go back. So bishop f4. Let's look at d5. Um, oh, white's played knight c3 most of the time. But I'll stick with e3, e6. Say knight d2. Ah, uh, chess.com. I'm not logged in. Let me log in. I am Rosen. All right. Of course, it doesn't save. Grandmaster, Gari, Black. Okay. So d4, knight of six. Say bishop f4. So yeah, he very rarely plays kings Indian, which is good. E3, e6, knight d2. Oops. So if he plays c5 immediately. There's some important move orders. Like, let's look at um, c5 immediately. Because I'm pretty sure there's a trick here after this. Bishop d6, now I have bishop b5 check. And I trick him into this knight c6 line. Usually black wants to delay knight c6. And then I would play bishop g3 here. 
Uh, maybe. Maybe it's not so impressive. He does have like queen b6 in some lines. Hmm. I thought there is a way to trick black. I assume bishop g3. Yeah, black just castles. So maybe again I, I would go for knight gf3. All right, let's go back to chess.com. So bishop d6. Um, okay, he's has he has two games in knight gf3, both of which white won, which is nice. So castling. Oops. Oh, so a few games here. I guess I have to figure out what move I would play. Let's go back to chess base. Um, so we're going to stick with uh, at least this move order. So knight gf3, let's make this the main line. Uh, black always castles. I'm looking here, so there's a few playable moves. Bishop d3 most common. Approved by Stockfish. Okay, bishop d3 it is. So go back to chess.com. And now he's played b6 and c5. So it looks like he's staying with the same setup. And there, there's a very similar line where white uses a tempo to put the bishop on uh, g3. So I think what I'll do, let me bring in these games. I'm actually going to open them in new tabs. So this is a game. Now let's go back to chess base. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but let's see. No, that did not work. So let's pr split screen this. Um, I just want a new board. Alright, so this is his game. Or this is one of the games. Okay, so... So he's played b6 here. The other game was c5, but we'll focus on b6 for now. c5, we'll look at... So b6. Oh, White's played queen e2 here. Make this a little bit smaller. Queen e2 is very logical. Okay, let's stick with what happened in this game. Castling. Bishop e7. C3. Fascinating. So White doesn't use a tempo playing bishop g3 and leaves the tension. And I mean, the structure, if bishop takes f4, it seems very playable. Like, let's just imagine takes, takes. Maybe I can find, like, one game. Okay, no one strong has played this. But Sockfish thinks it's playable. C5, G3, yada, yada. Maybe later, F5. Yeah, I don't mind that. So, okay, I'm being somewhat predictable playing the London, but if we go into this line, um, I'll surprise him a little bit by keeping the bishop on F4. So what happened in this game? Bishop b7. Okay, white played a bit differently. And then took on d6, so completely differently. Um, let's look. Okay, let's look at knight bd7 here. Ah, queen b1, interesting move. I like queen b1. Preventing knight e4. This is a novelty to promote this. We'll just have some novelty. Let's see, queen e7. I assume knight e5. Queen c2 recommended by Sackfish. No, knight e5 is most consistent. Black can't take on e5. Let's look at c5. What is this? Knight takes d7 and bishop e5. Fascinating. Yeah, all I want is something simple. Also, bishop g5 is interesting. So threaten h7. And threatening... Ooh, bishop g5. This is very crafty. Because h6. We take on d7 first, and then we double black's pawns. So takes, 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 and queen d1. 
Okay. Best line, so it takes. I'm not recommending bishop takes f6. Oh, bishop takes h7 is a move. And we're not getting trapped. Takes. I mean, yeah, I, this looks very scary for black. G6, just bishop takes g6. Okay. So I think I found some, some interesting line. Queen b1. Um, I do want to look at the other game that he's played. Oh, he played against Amon Hamilton. All right, let's look at this. Um, close now. New board. What? Oh, did I not? Oh, I forgot to copy it. Okay. So this is his game against Amon Hamilton. So playing in very similar fashion. Oh, Amon played bishop g3 here. Ah, uh, I see. So it actually just transposed. Knight g5. Wow. You look at this line. All right, so going back to this position, let's say c5. So if he plays b6, then it's castling bishop b7, queen. Just to review, b6, castling bishop b7, c3. Oh, that was it without c5. OK. Imagine the ideas are, are similar. What if knight e4 immediately? Oh, then I can probably just take. Yeah, knight e4 is just bad. OK. So c5 It's one of the main lines, and knight c6. So the question is, can we leave the bishop on f4? Yeah, castling looks very playable. Um, but the line that Amon played also looks kind of fun. Let's look at this here, here, um, then e4, bishop e7, e5. Yeah, so this is all standard theory. Knight h5 main line. Okay, bishop takes. Okay, computer, this is type of position that computer will crunch through. Um, doesn't like black initially. G6, right. Bishop takes d2, king takes d2. H6, bishop f4. Wow. There's some crazy line there. Let's look at g6. Queen e2. Didn't Amon have a game in this? Yeah, here he is. Hamilton against Kachian. So c takes d4. Yeah, this looks actually really fun. I remember actually looking at this line like very briefly at some point. Um, OK, so I, I have a game plan. Um, when I started this recording, uh, I, I wasn't sure what I was going to play, but now at least I have a plan. Um, so let's continue to dig. H4. And I, I can't fully trust the computer. Because like so many GMs have played this as white. I would imagine it's difficult to play like practically. So bishop h6 is very natural. I mean, looking at the computer lines just to get the ideas. So h5 is most likely coming. Yeah, so let's look at bishop d6, or bishop h6. Seems like the most likely move h5. d takes c3, most common. Some people have played g5 here. <coughs> g5 and bishop g7. Look at g5 briefly. Rook d1. Knight f3 seems more natural. Castling, right? So it looks like just a kind of weird position, which I wouldn't mind this. Castling takes, takes bishop d7, rook a d1, f5. I like knight f3. 
seems like the most flexible. And let's imagine we throw in this, get a d7. I mean, white has like very good control over the center. Uh, is down the pawn, but looks like nice compensation. Knight h2, wow. Knight h2 threatening this. f5 takes, takes, castling, what? It's crazy. Because e5 as a whole. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't analyze so deep, but it seems fun. So that was g5. Um, so just to review, yeah, this is all kind of what I've seen before. Knight g5 is the first kind of new move for me. Takes, takes. Um, if h6, what happens if h6? Knight f3. Okay, it looks pleasant. Some nice kind of French structure. So he takes d4, knight takes d4, takes, takes, queen e8. Okay, it looks very, very nice. We'll take here, and then later we play f4. Um, so, g6. What was the move here? Queen e2. Oh, we didn't look at bishop here. Oh, bishop here ends in a draw, right? Or no? Oh, this just looks fun for white. White's threatening mate. g6, queen h6. And if h6, bishop. Wow, bishop h4. Yeah, I mean, this is just devastating. And bishop f6, look at this. So nasty. Knight e7, queen g4, knight g6, h4, wow. So nice. And if it takes? Oh, we just take back and we're mating. Okay, that's a nice move. Okay, so this is most likely, at least if we get into this main line, H4, bishop h6, h5. This is where things can kind of start deviating. I looked at g5. Bishop g7, I didn't look at. Let's take a look. f4 looks kind of natural. Yeah, let's play f4. I mean, hold on to the e-pawn. Takes, takes. I mean, 97 looks like a natural move. Going to f5. Knight f3. Knight f5. Uh, just bishop f2 and g4. Okay. This is a weird structure because white's down the pawn but has some attack. So again, bishop d7, similar to the other position. But that had included g5. So bishop h4, queen c7, knight f3. Yeah, the dark squares are nice. Let's say like rook c8. g3. I use a queen h2. g3, knight a5. I'm trying to figure out like white's long-term idea. And queen c2 in air. Yeah, I like leaving the rook on h1. Okay, so is there anything else? Oh, d takes c3 immediately. Doesn't score great for white. But it look, looks like this transposes. Like bishop g7, yeah, same sort of position. Um, I don't see any differences. Leave the computer running for a little bit. Rook d1, what? Oh, the pawn's not attacked. Rook d1. Bishop d7, knight f3. Yeah. I mean... I think the computer is slightly confused here. It's like knight f3 is also kind of transposing. Rook d1, bishop d7, knight f3. Again, I'm looking for white's kind of long-term setup. King f1, also flexible. Okay, at least I have a, a plan if we go into this. So, just to recap. If 
if we go into this line, I play bishop g3. This is a line I played when I started playing the London. I usually like to have the bishop on b5 in this position. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is looking playable. And let's look at, like, this variation again. Because this is a sort of new structure for me. I assume it's okay. Um, so white's okay with IQP. Yeah, 95. Yeah, it's some positional game. Eventually F5, nice. Yeah. This game took on d4 with a knight. Also looks very pleasant. Yeah, slow positional buildup. Seems like black was a bit better here. Somehow white won. <sighs> Restore game. So I think I've I've covered what I wanted to cover. Um, I guess there's a couple other things to look at, like briefly. So bishop d6, I'll play knight f3. Okay. And then we'll let's say c5, and then let's say b6. These move orders can be tricky. Queen b1 here? Whoa, takes an e4. Yeah, maybe there's a reason why this isn't like theory. Takes an e4 looks really nice. It's e5 coming. I assume this is winning somehow. Oops, bishop takes. Maybe it's not winning. Is there any advantage here? Takes, takes, takes. Castling. Oh, castling and then take on c5. OK. Well, I think I'm going to end the recording here. I might do a, a few more glances at some, some lines. But um, OK, I feel better now because yeah, I started not having any plan, and now at least I have some idea. Um, that's one nice thing about playing an opening that I'm knowledgeable about. Like there, there's so many ideas that I've seen before. So even if he tries to surprise me, I think, um, or at least I hope I'll, I'll have some idea what to do. All right, so I'm going to try and do some game analysis recording tonight. So stay tuned for more videos, and I'll see you guys in the future. Bye.